If you could save lives and make a business out of it, how would you do it? Well, that's exactly the challenge that was given to Jane Chen, a student in Stanford back in 2008, and her classmates Rahul, Linus, and Naganand. Each year, 20 million babies with low weight are born. They struggle to keep alive because these babies can't regulate their body temperature. The babies are so, so tiny that they're, they don't have enough fat in their body to stay warm. And that is the job of an incubator. But traditional incubators require electricity and cost up to $20,000. So you're not going to find them in rural areas of developing countries. So Jane Chen and her classmates were given this challenge. What's their approach? Well, they approached it in a manner called, with a method called design thinking. What is design thinking? Oh, okay. Before I tell you what design thinking is, let me tell you a brief history about it. Think about the first Apple computer mouse. Originally, it was worth around $400. A design consulting firm called IDEO or IDEO were given the task of bringing the price down from $400 to $35 to 35 bucks. And at the same time, it had to be mass producible and reliable. And at the same time, it needed to be very simple. Fast forward 30 years, and IDEO doesn't create products anymore. They are designing experiences and networks. What does designing a computer mouse have to do with saving babies' lives? Actually, a lot. You see, back in 1971, a designer named uh, Victor Papenik wrote a book called Design for the Real World. The premise was simple, that creators could take some of the same design strategies and principles from the creation of industrial products and use them to tackle real-world problems like pollution and overcrowding and food shortages. That's what IDEO did. IDEO would bring this same technique to schools like Stanford University, the very same method that, is, that was applied by Jane and her classmates. They were very human-centered. What does being human-centered mean? So think of empathy. Think of you want to solve a problem. You really have the heart to solve it, but you don't know how. And then think about a problem that you do know how to solve, but you're not motivated. You don't have the heart to solve it. You had the brains. You had the logic. The design thinking approach combines both. You have empathy, you have the heart, and you have the brain and the logic to prove the business case studies and to prove the value that you're offering. Traditionally, there are five steps in design thinking. It's basically to empathize, which is the first step that I mentioned to you. To define, to focus on an area based on what you what you saw, to ideate, to look at many different solutions first before falling in love with the problem, you make a prototype, that's the fourth step, and then you test it. The steps are not really sequential, they can jump from back and forth through one, through one of the steps. Exa that's exactly what Jane Chen and uh, her classmates Rahul and Linus did. They started off by empathy. How did they do that? They actually went to a hospital in Nepal and looked at how incubators were being used. What did they find, find out? Apparently, a lot of the donated incubators were left there without being used. Why? Because a lot of the babies that were premature were born 30 miles away and it took them some time to get to the hospital. It was difficult to transport. Step two, they find the problem. Now, Jane and her team, they learned two alarming things. First, that an overwhelming majority of premature Nepalese infants were born in rural areas. Second, that most of the infants would never make it to the hospital. They realized that no matter how good their design was for a new incubator, it would never help the babies if it stayed in the hospital. To save the maximum number of lives, their design would have to function in a rural environment to have to work without electricity and be transportable, intuitive, sanitizable, culturally uh, appropriate, and perhaps most important, cheap. 
So they went back to school and discussed how were we going to solve this. They looked at the different options they had. Initially, they could just have made uh, looked at an incubator and replaced it with cheaper parts and removed some of the other parts. And then they actually talked about each with each other. What can we actually do within their term? They just wanted the project that they could finish within school. But the others decided, no, we should practice this and apply it in the real life, in actual the rural areas. So that's where their focus was. That's the second phase defined. They reframed their problem. What is the design challenge? Their design challenge was, how might we create a baby warming device that helps parents in remote villages, giving their dying infants a chance to survive? So remember, notice, they didn't think about making an alternative incubator. incubator. They thought of how might we create a baby warming device. So that's the focus. That's the defined part. Next part is to ideate. What does ideate mean? It means thinking, brainstorming of many different solutions without necessarily falling in love with a solution immediately. So if I, if I ask you in mathematics, how do you get to four? Think about it. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? How do you get to four? How many of you thought of two plus two equals four? That's the first thing that comes to, comes to our mind. As design thinkers, we are trained not to fall in love with the very first solution. We fall in love with the problem. So how do you get to four? You can get to a four by eight minus four, two times two, two squared. There are many alternatives before you get to a four. So that's what it means to ideate to look at many different options first before falling in love with a solution. Then you make a prototype and then you test. The last two are prototype and test. What does that mean? Go back to Jane Chen. By the end of their class in 2008, they had the first working prototype. They called it the Embrace Infant Warmer. The design looked like a sleeping bag for babies. It was wrapped with a Phase change material that kept the baby's body at exactly the right temperature and maintained that temperature for up to four hours. After four hours, that phase change pouch could be recharged by submerging it in boiling water for a few minutes. What the team did was they actually tested it in the field. They went to uh, India to do their test. They, they gave it to a mother, and what did they discover when they tried to give it to, to their, the first test, the initial test? The Indian mothers, apparently, did not believe too much in Western medicine. So the, their first iteration of the in, Embrace Infant form Warmer had a uh, indicator, a, vis, a, a num, numerical indicator indicating the temperature. So the int- instructions was, to keep the to make boil water until it reaches 37 degrees and then stop take it out but because the indian mothers did not believe in western medicine they usually when they were told to give a teaspoon of medicine to their babies they would only give half so she said that um, the one mother said that if you if she was to boil it up to 37 degrees she would only boil it up to 30 degrees which was very alarming so, in the spirit of iteration, what, what did the team do? They actually just made it simple. When it reached a certain temperature, it would just say, okay. Just okay. Green light. Okay. You, you, it's ready to take out. Making it simple and taking out the decision, the, taking out the numerical number could have been the difference in change, saving the baby's lives. So, test it. Traditional engineers would have blamed this to user error, users not understanding what it means. But in the spirit of design thinking, you wanted to adapt to what the market was using, what the parents were using. You were adapting to the environment. And that was what empathy. That's what empathy means. So if you want to go to business to to do your startup, ask yourself, Are you offering real value? Are you really solving a problem? Have you tested it in the field? That testing in the field, we we have a term for it in software development. It's called the minimum viable product. So are you making a minimum viable product? 
What's important to remember in these five steps is that these are like a zoomed out map. And what's inside the smaller steps can vary vastly between corporations or businesses. But these are the big, big areas. Now, what happened to the Embrace team, to Jane, to Rahul, to Linus? Well, at the end of their term, they faced a hard decision. What would they do next? They could have stopped working in the, with a the prototype. And actually, two of them were already getting offers to work in uh, prominent startups. Uh, Jane herself was already thinking about finishing her first MB MBA and going to her own field. In the end, they decided we could not just walk away. So they approached various uh, startup uh, incubators, uh, fellowships to raise more money to continue the business. Where are they right now? Well, uh, Embrace uh, Infant Warmer is actually a, a, a foundation. They have a business in India right now. They started it in India. And up to now, Jane is actually the, managing uh, the Embrace Infant Warmer Foundation and the products that they have. So that's design thinking. Have a heart, have the brain, use logic, think about iterating the, your designs, not falling in love with the solution immediately. Those are the hearts of design thinking. If you'd like to know more about it, I, I recommend you look at two books, Creative Confidence by Tom Kelly and Change by Design by Tim Brown. And if you'd like to find mentors and other people to help solve problems through design thinking, look for UX Philippines or UXPH on Facebook. You can also visit the website in uxph.org for more information. I'm Eli Apao. I'm a customer experience manager for one of the uh, biggest Philippine conglomerates. And I'm also a founder of one of the biggest design nonprofit communities, UX Philippines. Till next time.